Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the police station model inside Jang Brick City. If you have not seen our full video of Jang City, then we'll make sure to put a link to that in the description below so you can check out the whole incredible layout. But today we're taking a look at just the police station and the full interiors in here. So before we dive on inside, what can you tell us about the outside of this model? This is my, my second custom police station. Um, I tried to use a bunch of parts from the original. The original was, I think, my first large-ish like almost modular sized building in, in my city back back in the day like i think i started that one like late 2013 or something like that uh and it had just gotten dated like for for its time i was happy with it but i needed to i needed to replace it i needed something that was going to fit into the, my my current feeling and direction for the city on the whole and I wanted to give a lot of homage to, to the original. So there are a bunch of, uh, literally a bunch of parts of it, uh, of the original in here, and also some elements that are inspired by it. But at the same time, I wanted to not be too constrained to it. Like I didn't want to just take the original and just make it, make it bigger or anything. This is unfortunately a little bit, um, externally, I'd say a little bit too rectangular. You know, it focuses a little bit too much on a lot of, 90 degree right angles. I uh, tried to break that a little bit with this strange element in, in the middle, which is just an artifact of having tried a, a window arrangement, a, a window design, and sitting it, li literally just had those frames just sitting there. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep that. <laughs> because it, it's something that, that, that just kind of breaks, breaks up the monotony of, the, again, the, the 90 degree angles. But I, I really wanted to put a ton of interior detail in this and for the sake of of maximizing space I, I i just you know went with that that more blocky blocky design the most interesting thing about this from an architectural perspective is this floor here is actually not supported by this like this is just completely loose so technically this is a, an entirely cantilevered floor yeah. that's supported by the section to you know over here on the on the the right hand side um, so i had to think of the engineering for that a little bit because there is quite a bit of of weight to this and it requires that there be a certain amount of weight above it and <laughs> uh, and yet it's still able to be removed floor by floor and then on top here we see examples of both the helicopter and is that a drone as well yeah old old tricopter uh, drone from from back in the days when when the police force in my city was originally very very oppressive They've had a, a regime change since then, but they still have their 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 bits of tech They're just using them a little bit more responsibly these days The uh, the helicopter is my original helicopter. That's going to be replaced eventually That's going to be replaced with something a little bit a little bit bigger I'll probably stick with the same basic design with a little bit of inspiration from old 1980s arcades like Chop, chop Lifter or Poc, uh, uh, Poc, I think Apocalypse. No, Apoc was it Apocalypse? The Ford Apocalypse. Ford Apocalypse. Yeah, on the on the Commodore 64. Um, they took like inspiration from uh, Huey Cobras. Okay. I think in in their design, <laughs> there's just something about that that design. I like the the look of the the, the cockpit, the, the narrow and a little bit of kind of a an angry angry look to it but uh, this has this has the the idea of an elevator shaft but not an actual working elevator shaft i just wanted to make sure that that was something that was visible to make you realize that there is minifig access to each of the levels but i didn't want to take up as much space as would be needed to make it actually work um, and then yeah we'll, we'll look at the the individual uh, departments inside of this and everything but otherwise it has a a garage um, a two bay garage down below and a, a publicly accessible main lobby space with the helicopter pad off you can see the first layer now so what is in the topmost section of the police station yes yeah, it's, it's the city jail so the the original design had the the jail as kind of its own its own wing uh, so this has the the entire building has at least the idea of an elevator access to the whole thing. And then I've got four, I forget how many cells I had before. I've got four individual cells there. Uh, two of them have bunk beds in them. Got a few inmates or just normal folks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just caught for like misdemeanors and, and simple stuff. And this is, this is intake and security both. 
So kind of kind of combined together to get somebody who's uh, uh, being being brought in, is being processed, getting his mug shot and everything. And yeah, I got had the the officer who brought him in, and then somebody who's just a longer term attendant and security for the space, and then the the main whole. Uh, jail wing, I guess, is, is separately access controlled as its own door. Just, you know, I was thinking about security a little bit. It's also part of the reason that I put it up at the, the highest level. So they're farthest away from, from escape, except for <laughs> the criminals who have their own helicopters, which is another thing, but maybe we'll have to deal with that, <laughs> you know, when, uh, when that issue becomes more, uh, more present. <laughs> One of one of the cool architectural elements I like in this building is the blue columns on the corners there. That was one of the very actually. You know what? When I think about it, I think that was the the original inspiration to take this project on. When I did, uh, I ran out of space in my my transparent colored blocks drawer. It was just completely full, all different colors. Yeah. And so I went through sorting it out to see what what I had the most of, and I had just this stack of two by two. Uh, it's from from Minecraft sets mostly, uh, the the water water pieces, and yeah, it just reminded me of of police station yeah. and, and it, yeah, it's kind of where it started. And I wanted to preserve those because they look nice. I like large areas of transparent stuff, especially colored transparent stuff. And there you go. Sounds good. We'll make our way down to the next oh, level. One other, one other thing, oh, yeah. real quick. Um, because this is going to be downtown, or it is, it is kept downtown. Um, I, I didn't want the jail section to be too obvious. I didn't want it to detract from real estate values in, in the area. <laughs> so I just put in this panel here that just kind of dis it's like a it's like a camouflage. It's just a, kind of an art installation with with stained glass that just makes it not look like a jail from from the outside. You got to consider all these things with your city, you know, maintain property values, security by putting them at the top floor. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we'll see what the offices are up to down there below. Right. On this level, you've got all the essentials, but mostly a workout area, which you've absolutely got to have <laughs> here. I also love how colorful that area is as well. Yeah, I, I think I, I was thinking about like uh, rock crawling walls like you know public rock hall yeah crawling indoor spaces just took a little bit of inspiration from that because when i started putting the the clamps on the on the wall i think i started out with something a little bit uh more more of a muted color scheme for that but yeah just you know a bunch of bunch of free weights and a bar there i got a uh, a couple of decent exercise bikes in using the the mountain bike frames uh, people have to lean forward a little bit too much but i was kind of happy with the how those designs worked out in the the wheels actually able to to spin in there, the rear wheel. Yeah, I just wish they weren't leaning forward quite a bit, <laughs> quite as much. More of a workout that way. Yeah, I guess. Um, restroom next to that, just in the in the center, and you know, smallest that I reasonably could with, uh, yeah, just the 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 bare minimums. <laughs> Across from that is the server room. Uh, just a whole bunch of servers up on on racks. You know, just used printed computer looking pieces and uh, you know things that look like buttons and and lights no no particular rhyme or reason to it other than just kind of getting the whole overall feel overall look uh, each each of the floors at, at the upper levels has kind of a, a hallway area for accessing everything uh, this is the main conference room space uh, who would love to have a bunch of conference rooms but there's only one major one Takes a little bit. A lot of this takes inspiration from TV cop shows. A, a lot of it does. So here we've got the instead of a instead of a whiteboard or something like that. It's it's a big old uh, ultra agents based holographic you know <laughs> screen. You can just imagine they would use it as a as a touch screen and have you know multi touch gestures <laughs> zooming in on this particular yeah, enhance, area here. Enhance. Yes, <laughs> a lot of that. Lots of that. So we got a big a big uh, operation that's being. Uh, uh, briefed about right there. I'm decently happy with with that space. It gets the it gets the ideas across. Uh, the pit uh, it, again, lots of inspiration from TV shows. So that's that's really what the the pit here is all about. I've not actually 
been into one of these spaces, see what they're really like. They're probably a lot less exciting. But I just wanted to have you know a bunch of. I think TV shows are pretty accurate. So what oh, you for see on sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. I would base everything off of that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that a lot of people will will recognize a lot of the things that are here, uh, including some of the the personalities and the idea of the one guy who brings in his food that's probably <laughs> extra smelly. You know, the person across is not too happy about. All the office dynamics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, tried to tried to use as many different computer screens as reasonably possible. Some of them are the same, but at least oriented some differently and used some some sticker parts. Got some uh, you know papers, newspapers, and notes and things from different series. And this one has a, a decent sized large copy uh, yeah copy machine and a fax machine next to it because. Even though New Jang City is intended to be like near future, maybe 2050-ish kind of range, still fax, some, some types of organizations are still using fax machines because inertia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the, the final area on this level is the interim chief's office. It's supposed to be the chief's office, but I mentioned that the, the, old, the old guard was, was kicked out and that went through multiple levels of, of hierarchy and the way that they had written their bylaws, uh, the next person in line to actually become chief per the, the old laws was the lady who worked the, the front reception desk. <laughs> so that is literally my original reception counter uh, uh, figure in full who is now the, the acting chief. And we'll have to wait until, you know, Actual There's been a lot of uh, upheaval in, <laughs> yeah. in the city. Here. Yeah. But from what I understand, she's still she's doing a pretty decent job, you know, so far, and is uh, you know keeping keeping the the ship running with all the new staff and the new building and everything. There you go. She learned a lot running that front desk. Yep. I mean, you a lot, a lot comes across the desk there. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So you get to see kind of a lot of the you know, logistical roles and yeah. the desk jobs and things mm -hmm. and, you know, the, maybe the less exciting part of the police work, but you got to represent all that. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, we can take a look down at the, the next level, and I know part of that is the kind of architectural element, so it's, it'll be another kind of half level to check out. Exactly, exactly. Here's where we get into the real TV crime <laughs> drama action right here. So we got a lab going on. Yeah. Usually it takes, what, about one minute to figure all this stuff out, and that's usually how it works in the shows, and then they've got it all put together, and you oh, can completely. move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, just, it, all, it all just falls into place. If you just <laughs> put things on the table and you know, throw some things on the wall, maybe uh, bring up a tablet and then just gesture for it to, <laughs> to come up onto the bigger screen, then everybody can look at it and... One person, you know, the, the, the most senior ranking person can just kind of cross their arms and look with, uh, with concern and not quite Intensity. believe it, but yeah, <laughs> but, but it all comes together. Like, all right, I, 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 I don't know about this, but I'll trust you guys just this once, but you better get this right. Bring the bad guy in and make sure it's the right one. We've got a lot of eyes on this case. So that's what this represents. <laughs> so that's what she represents right there. And you, can, you can just see the uh, you can see the uh, the lack of trust as the uh, as the the quirky uh, crime lab tech is is explaining how everything is connected, and you've got uh, you know the combination of the holographic heads up tech and then a, a chalkboard over there just because. You know, that adds drama when you can actually just draw lines between things <laughs> on the screen. That, it's and that or string. Things. I mean, if you don't right, have string, right. you know, the chalkboard. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I thought about doing the, str the string thing, but that's more of a, that, that needs to be a little bit more of a dark space, a little bit more of an individual detective's office. Oh, that's true. You know, there you <laughs> like, go. I've been working on this cold case for, <laughs> for 12 years now. <laughs> you know? But yeah, this is, this is 100%. Uh, uh, fictionalized and just tries to really tries to look like a, a TV crime lab with various tech, you know, and microscopes and, and they're, they're Erlenmeyer flasks there for crying out loud. Like, <laughs> come on. Uh, the, the fridge and the free, the fridge and freezers have some 
suspect items in them, including some food that probably shouldn't be in there. But you know, it's it's TV crime lab, so you know, you got the you got the quirky techs who you know have quirky ways about them. Forgot but. they left their lunch <laughs> next to the you know DNA samples. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Because <laughs> it's all going to work out in, in the end. Uh, oh yeah, and also uh, there's a, a very large jar of pickles over here. That's very, very important. It's actually it actually worked out pretty well with the the the, um, uh, the leaf piece upside down in green. It makes it look like uh, looks like it's it's in in brine there. Yeah. Perfect. And then if you come out into the hallway here, what do we have? Yeah, so this is this is the evidence locker. So it's just a whole bunch of lockers with the with the half half door that can open up so it's been opened up to allow a large package to come through but you know you got the graded space so it's access controlled and you know people can't pass things through without the uh, person behind the counter you know signing off on mm -hmm. it and you know make sure that everything is is properly accounted for um, most of the things will fit into actual uh, closed lockers but there's also some overflow space off to the side just be a little bit behind the door right now i can't see it all that all that well but for uh, odd odds and ends you know things that just don't don't fit including a large uh, Lego city set that was the biggest one for its for its season so that wouldn't fit in one of the boxes there. You know? <laughs> um, next thing over is it's actually kind of kind of two rooms in in one but it's uh, it's equipment so just uh, here we got uh, firearms as well as batons a crossbow Police crossbow. I mean, you can imagine it. You can imagine a Lego City crossbow battle pack. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Archer. You can Archer. imagine a lot of things. Sure, right. They <laughs> uh, also got uh, stun guns, and then over here is the the non uh, non lethal equipment. So those are those are separate. So they're uh, there's actually separate access control for the two. So non lethal equipment, uh, you know, more of the officers are able to get into, and then lethal equipment. Uh, it's, it's relatively limited and also has um, more suggestion of of, uh, of of security to it. And I use the the, the great large grating piece here to give myself just more spaces to to hang things up. You know, try to use all of the all the vertical space that was available. Yeah, definitely, definitely tried to use all of that. And uh, I think this back here would be the, uh, the ammo box. So the ammo. Uh, Ammo locker. Very nice, and you can get a, a quick look as well at that architectural element that you referenced earlier, and kind of see how that came together a little more. Yeah, it, it was it was literally I was I was trying to figure out what the what the design. I think it was for this. I forget if it was this level or the the ground level. Just what the what the windows would would look like. So I was doing this, and had this built out to more of a more of a, a square shape. And I, at some point, I just set it down and looked at it and like. Huh, that's it's actually kind of kind of interesting. And then I did it in a couple of colors. Black was an easy one because you know black goes with anything. And then I just decided to offend the senses by going with something that's <laughs> that's off color and off grid because art, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough reasons. <laughs> well, we can move down to the garage and the ground level now. That all right. Now we've got the garage and a surprise extra floor here. So I thought we were just going down to the final floor, but there's even more to come. <laughs> yep. So we got an extra extra level in between. And the reason for that, well, it's kind of combined left and right. I wanted the lobby space to have a high ceiling and I wanted the garage to have a high ceiling as well. And, you know, they just happen to be next to each other the way that the way that it worked. So that just gives us a lot of it just makes the the spaces feel larger so the garage feels feels larger and more uh, i guess a little bit more believable in in a way it has more of a of an industrial sp industrial in interior space feeling which is what i what i wanted for it so they've they've got kind of a, a break room kind of space at the back and some equipment lockers back there uh, there's some equipment for for working on the vehicles for doing a little bit of basic maintenance and then also storage for uh, uh, traffic management devices, you know, cones and uh, you know barriers and things, and then they've also got fueling as well as charging for electric vehicles, and those are stations on on both sides. A little bit, a little bit of oil spill on the on the ground as well. 
the working facility, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then the, again, the, the lobby space, the main entry space, I wanted to have just a little bit of kind of comfortable feeling entryway uh, for citizens just doing, doing walk-ins. And you've got a little waiting area off to the space. And, and basically just a, a slightly uh, embiggened version of my, my original reception table design. Again, I wanted to just have a little bit of reference for, for folks who remember the original. Uh, so it looks a little bit familiar, but also a little bit new. And I made a big uh, police badge or shield design on the, on the wall over here just to, to fill in that space. And it feels like something that, that I would have seen at a, at a government, government office, you know, a large m mural or big plaque kind of thing just to, to take up some space and to, mm -hmm. to break the monotony. But because, I, because both of these spaces had high ceilings, it left me with enough room to put an entire extra small level over over here, which just let me pack more things in. So this has the, again, sticking with the, with the TV cop show theme, it's got the large interrogation room with the one-way mirror on, on one side, which, which works if you have a strong enough, it actually does work if you have a strong enough difference in, in light level between the two. It's kinda, kinda hard to pull it off right now, but got a, a very old, it's a one by, f it's a one by four by, I want to say, no, yeah, one by four by five window frame, not the usual one by four by six that we have today, but one by four by five, and then a, a mirror, an actual official Lego mirror sticker piece on it. But yeah, we've just got uh, you know, a little, little interview going on there, and then you got the observation room on, on the other side, which has just enough room for a couple people to to be in there. And then behind that are just cubicles for individual investigators. So I've um, just got um, uh, a few people sitting there, which this, this space is, is shared between dispatch and them. I wasn't, I wasn't really fully decided on, on which way to, to go with that. Um, so this, this person here is actually is doing dispatch, but the idea was if I needed more office space for for investigators, they would, they would use those those desks. And of course, you got to have a water cooler. So that's, <laughs> that's there. And, and then the the very last space is just a, a really tiny, the tiniest space I could come up with that could theoretically fit two people in there, with a camera up above and a, a little desk to to put something down for down on for dramatic effect. Like, can you tell me what this is? So it's it's just a, an interview, a, a one on one interview room. There you go. You captured all all of the needed elements <laughs> yes. for every police force. <laughs> so, is there more underneath this section? There then, is. Or? There oh, is. okay. Well, we can take a look at that then. We're at the bottom level now. I'm seeing a lot of food down in this section. Had to have a break room. <laughs> you know, you gotta have you gotta have the the space for for humanizing the characters. I'm sorry. That's right. This isn't TV. This is real life. Um, uh, Workers need to eat. There we go. Um, yes, they need sustenance to be able to continue to perform their duties um, optimally. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just break room. Um, uh, got a vending machine on one side. Uh, you know, sink, fridge, uh, coffee machine, microwave, of course, and space for folks to hang out and. Rest their legs yeah. for a minute and, you know, chat with one another. You ought to have an area to bring in the donuts each morning? I'm not big on donuts. The, oh. the, the, donut, the donut thing, I feel, is just a little bit overdone and also a little bit, a little bit easy. So in, in my city, the thing is waffles. You may have seen some waffles around other floors before. Your viewers can go back and, and uh, check for, <laughs> for the Easter eggs. But, yeah, it's, it's more, about, more about waffles with, with this one. There we go. You've got you to have something unique for yeah. your police force. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, a rest, uh, uh, another restroom. This one's a, theoretically publicly accessible, like if somebody's waiting in the, in the the rest, uh, sorry, the waiting space, then they can be buzzed in, but this is access controlled in, into here, so they would have to be escorted to the door of the place. But yeah, it's, that's why it's a little bit, little bit larger and has a little bit better accommodations. There's also a um, uh, janitorial services closet 
across from that, I just figured, you know, a place this big is going to need some some cleanup work on a regular basis. So there's a floor buffer down there and then just a bunch of cleaning supplies and things. And then a uh, hall, hallway that connects everything. So connecting from the public space from the front, you've got a, a clear base door there, which just makes it feel a little bit more, a little bit more welcoming. But then once you get back into the, the access control spaces, then it's more about uh, function over form. So just the solid doors and also takes you into the, the elevator, uh, Lobby, if anybody gets brought in, if any criminals get brought in through the garage uh, uh, vehicle bay, uh, then they can be taken into this center space without having access to any other areas. They can just be taken to here, and the elevator comes down here, so that, that can take them up to the, to the jail. You know, they can be booked there. Just, again, thinking about security. And also, um, got a side door out here, which is access controlled with a little panel. Uh, the idea is that there will be uh, just parking off to the side, out, outside parking yeah. for the police bikes and things. And then I also have a police train for my city. So when that uh, is accessed, there's a door at the back. So just you know, thoughts of where everybody can be, where they can be going, where they can be coming from. And you mentioned the elevator shaft, and we see this large section back here. So yeah. this build doesn't have lights like a lot of your other interior builds do, but you did keep that in mind and possibly adding them in the future. I absolutely want to light this up. Ultimately, I want all of any, any building that I have that has interior detail, I want to be fully lit up. And with this one, I learned from my experience with the, with the hospital mock uh, that I, I want to have easier access to connecting the, the cables between different, different floors. So for this one, I, I have the elevator shaft, the entire outside section of it able to be just pulled straight out. So this, this covers every single, every single floor all the way up to the top. And without removing the floors, I can just bend this back and that will give me access to all of the, the wires and I can just disconnect at each floor. So once this is fully lit up, it'll be a lot easier to to get back inside to do maintenance, to make changes and things. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And for people who haven't seen the hospital build, we'll have a separate video on the channel on that, so make sure to check that out as well. But thanks for taking us through the whole for police sure. station here. Thanks for coming.